This video tutorial will be on the basics of setting up Unix file permissions and ownership. So we'll go cover the basics of commands like change own, change mod, etc, etc, etc. Now the video is by me, but I'm basing it on a lab from Kevin Benton. He's the TA in a course I'm currently taking, and he said he was okay with me basically making a video of me running through the lab. So I've recorded that, and hopefully it would be good for demonstration purposes. First off, we should probably go into some of the basics and background of how Unix type file permissions work. Since you have things broken down into a few different categories, you have your modes, you have your owner's permissions, you have your group permissions, and you have your other permissions, also sometimes known as world permissions. The owner is whoever owns the file, and the group is whatever group that file happens to belong to. For instance, there's a group automatically called Adrian if you have a username called Adrian. And if I just create a file, more than likely that file will be owned by username Adrian and group Adrian. Other would be anybody else on the system. Now this is sometimes represented symbolically with these letters. For instance, the U would be set user ID, the G would be set group ID, and the T would be set the sticky bit. Then of course you have your read, write, and execute for both owner, group, and other. Now this is sometimes represented in octal format. For instance, if I want to set all these flags, it would be 7777. Now, more than likely, I wouldn't want to do this, but this is just an example. Now, this represented in binary would be this series of all ones. Now, for those who don't know binary that well, essentially on the far right-hand side, you have the ones placed. Next over, you have the twos placed. Next over, you have the fours placed. So, four plus two plus one, you end up with seven. But essentially, if a flag is set to a one, that, mean that, flag, that means that flag is enabled. For instance, if the R for flag is set on, let's say, owner, it will be set to a one. So you basically can convert this binary into the auto representation to set it. Also, you can many times use a symbolic setting to actually use change mod and set the file permissions accordingly. We're going to go more into that when I actually do the video and start using change mod. For instance, let's say I want to set the owner group and everyone else to have full permissions of read, write, and execute on a file. The execute is only going to make sense if it's a binary file that's an executable. Uh, the zero on here is I don't want to mess around with the special mode bits whatsoever. So I don't want to turn on set user ID, set group ID, or the sticky bit. Now to explain a little bit more about them, let's say this flag. This is the set user ID flag. If this is set, Whenever that file is ran, assuming it's a binary that's being ran, it's going to run the permissions whoever owns the file. Now, this is useful for like elevating privileges to do certain special things. Let's, let's say the uh, password command for changing passwords. Or well, it's going to have to edit the shadow file to add that password hash in. So that binary might very well be set user ID, so it runs with the permissions of whoever owns it. Much the same thing with set group ID, except for it runs the permissions of whoever group happens to be associated with the file. Then there's the sticky bit. And what this does varies from Unix-like operating system to Unix-like operating system. Now my understanding on Linux, essentially it just makes it so that particular, let's say it's a directory, no one can rename or delete it except for root and the owner of it. Then you have other flags, such as the owner's read permissions, either one for the yes they can read it, or zero if they can't read it. If they're the owner though, they can always give themselves rights to read it if they want to. Uh, owner's right, owner's execute, and then much the same permissions for everything else like group read, group write, group execute, and of course everybody else, other read, other write, and other execute. And throughout the video you'll see I use different terminology from time to time. Like I might use world instead of the word other. So I'm sorry about any confusion there. Also, it's sometimes kind of hard to say, set the user ID bit or, GUI or group ID bit on the ID command. So it gets a little bit uh, confusing, but hopefully you can follow along and this video tutorial will be useful to you. If nothing else, there's some links at the end of the video which should hopefully explain it more clearly. I had to do a lab on file permissions, so I figured I'd go ahead and record it as well. Hopefully it'll be uh, useful to some of my viewers. You see I've already SSH'd into my test box as Iron Geek. And for this lab, I'm going to have to add a few users. So first one we'll do is add Alice. 
and it's going to ask me for a password. That's because I'm using sudo. So, enter my password, and possibly fat finger it. I have a tendency to do that. And there we go. Now, since I entered it here recently, the next few accounts, it shouldn't necessarily ask me for um, a password. So, let's give this a shot. We're going to add Bob, Mallory, and Chuck. So now if we cat out Etsy password, we should see those particular accounts. Yippee. Notice we're using shadow passwords so we don't actually have hashes in here. Now we're going to have to add a whole bunch of directories and files. We're going to be using the make directory command for making the directories. If you use the dash p option, apparently that will go ahead and create all the parts of the uh, file system tree. For instance, you don't have to create make directory data, then make directory finance. You can just do dash p slash op slash data slash finance and it will automatically create both data and finance. At least that's my understanding of the command. So I'm going ahead and paste in a bunch of commands and it looks like I screwed them up. Notice that it cannot touch these particular files because I don't have permissions. I didn't use the sudo command. These ones automatically ran and notice it did not ask me for a password. That's because I had recently used sudo so it remembered for a short amount of time. So I'm actually going to have to issue these touch commands again in a slightly different way. So let me go ahead and uh, sudo dash i because I'm lazy and now I have essentially a root shell. Now if I enter those same commands I should be able to have them all created. Essentially what touch does is if the file doesn't exist it just creates it. Uh, if it does this my understanding it updates file, uh, file timestamps and so forth. We're going to be using these files later on to uh, demonstrate Unix file permissions. Now let's play around with the ls command to see what's what. We can do just a simple ls and see what command, uh, what, sorry, what files are in our current location. Currently I don't have any non-hidden files. I'll do a al. You can see a few hidden files. And also you'll see file permissions. By the way, these dots in front, essentially on uh, most Unix systems, that makes the file hidden from a normal ls. You'll notice a few different permissions right through here. Essentially you have three bits for setting various permissions other than some other ones like, uh, well, for instance, this D means this is a directory. But here's some of the permissions. These first three are showing that the owner has read, write, and execute permissions on that particular folder. In this case, you see that the group has read and execute permissions but not write on this folder. And world has read and execute but not write. By the way, this is the folder one directory up. Uh, let's actually do a little bit better example. Let's um, do uh, ls-l, we won't see uh, hidden files, opt data, and we see what all is in there. And you see the world writable, read and execute, group, read and execute, owner, read, execute, and uh, write. A few other fields in here you might want to notice is the owner, the group, file size, and the timestamp of when it was last modified. Along with, of course, the file name. At this point, it's time to get change own happy. So we can set the ownership of these various files to something other than root. So if I do a change own, and do a nothing else we find that we can get help with just a dash dash help and a few useful things in here notice that we're going to be using recursive later on but that gives you the basic syntax for how change own works now we're going to set Alice up with op data and set the ownership of that so she has it now if we do a ls 
op data, we should see, sorry, forgot the L. We should see that the directory itself will belong to her. Now, it didn't show me the subdirectory, so let me use a A there. And notice it also shows the dot dot for one directory up and dot for current directory. You notice Alice seems to be the owner now of this directory, but notice that she's not the owner of any of the subdirectories yet. We'll cover doing that here in a bit. But we have a few other non recursive um, permissions we have to set, oh, sorry, more uh, ownerships we have to set right now. So I'm going to paste those in. Essentially, I just set Alice up to own financing and the corresponding commands for setting up Bob to uh, own op data development and so forth. Now, let's say we wanted to set all the subdirectories and files also to own, be owned by that particular person. Well, we can use the dash R, which will make things nice and convenient. Now, to demonstrate doing it recursively, let's say we have all the subdirectories and uh, files, we could use a dash R, or uppercase R to be specific. Now, if we did a listing of, let's say, that particular folder, Notice that the file inside of it is also owned by Bob, not just the directory. However, notice that the group is still root. So how do we go about changing that? Now, of course, the question comes up, how do we actually set that group as well? Well, let's go back to our little help. By the way, man change own probably has even more details. If you want a lot more details, However, something we noticed in just issuing the help, using the up arrow to go through my history, notice that we can specify group and owner this way. So let's actually use that syntax and set some more permissions. In this case, apparently we're going to be opening up a photo so that uh, Apache can look at it. So it looks like I may have screwed up there at some point. No, that's, just, that's good. Notice I used the colon and wdata. Basically, I'm associating it with the same group as the owner. And, uh, of course, what I want to, uh, the file I want to set that permission, or sorry, the ownership on. So now if I do a directory, sorry, if I do an ls on, let's say, marketing public, you should see that both the group and the owner are www-data. It should also be noted that if you want to just change group, you can just use change group. And of course you can get help on that as well, and you can also pull up the man page on it. But I did it in one fell swoop with uh, just change own. Now as part of an explanation, I'm going to uh, kind of use my terminal here as a notepad. Essentially, uh, most of your file permissions for is read, write, and execute are set as single bits. So let's say one, sorry, one, one, one. This one would represent, let's say, read, you have your write, and you execute. Well, you can specify those in decimal numbers instead. For instance, one, 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 where well, you have the ones place, the twos place, and the fourths place. So one 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 would be seven, and that would be, for instance, write permissions, read permissions, and execute permissions. What if you have one zero one? Well, one zero one, fourths place, ones place. That should give us a five. So this would give read and execute. So if we did a five permissions or five five five, that would be read and execute permissions for both owner, group, and world. And we'll get to that in just a second. But that's just a quick explanation of why these numbers I'm about to use correspond to what they do. Now we want to want to get a lot more information on how permissions work and the command we're going to use this for this mostly is going to be change mod. So let's do a man change mod and you can look at the documentation on it. Essentially, we'll have various options we can set, what file we want to set permissions on or folder, and depending. And all the details are in here, but I'm going to try to explain them as I use the commands. Oh. 
Okay, now let's actually start setting some more permissions. If we did a ls al on a op data, we should see the following. Actually, you see that that directory has permissions for everybody. I set that up here a second ago just so you'd actually see the changes I'm about to make. Now, there's a couple ways we could set permissions. Uh, here's one way. We can use octal format. Essentially, we're saying we don't mess with the sticky bit. Maybe more on that later. We're giving full permissions, in other words, 111, which represents 7 in binary, to the user, the owner of it. And uh, both the group and the world only get read and execute. So if we execute that particular command and then repeat our listing, notice that owner has full permissions and everybody else only has read and execute. Now there's a different way we can actually format that if it's uh, hard to convert. We can use a command like this. Essentially we say the user of the file. I know owner seems to make more sense, but owner is always, always used for something like other in this case. We're going to set it to read, write, execute group to read, write, execute, and of course other to read, write, execute. We use that and command, well, no particular change in this circumstance. It's basically just a different way of expressing the exact same command. Now let's work on actually getting rid of some permissions. Let's say uh, we want to manipulate financing. So let's see what the permissions are currently. Notice that world and group sorry, I'll just read and execute but the owner is read, write, and execute. So let's go about actually changing that. There's a couple of formats we could use to remove that. Uh, probably a 700 would work just fine. Uh, however, I'm going to use the more verbose format that's possibly more readable. So let me set finance change mod give rewrite and execute to the owner of the file and nothing to the other two. So now let's do a little ls on it and notice that they have nada but the owner has rewrite execute. However the file inside of it notice that world has read and so does the group. Let's say I want to set permissions on that. Well I want to keep them the same for the user and this is probably more verbose than it absolutely has to be. Let's set permissions on that file. Notice I'm uh, setting the owner of the file to read and execute and nothing for the other two. And let's repeat that ls. And notice he has write and execute. Do I think I actually screwed up the directions in the uh, lab because I don't think those are the permissions I was supposed to set. So let's do some experimentation to correct the mistake I just made. Notice the command I used before was this. Well, I've always set the owner in group, so I don't need to do anything with them. I don't actually want this person to have execute. So let's see what happens if I just say user read write. Now let's do an ls on that and see what permissions they have. Notice no more execute, but they do have read write, and everybody else has nothing, which is as things were intended to be from the lab. Now we have a whole bunch of other little... Uh, settings we have to make. So we're going to set a bunch of other permissions and um, I'm going to copy and paste something I've kind of prefabricated for doing this. You can see here I'm setting read, write, and uh, execute permissions to the owner of op data development and setting just read and execute for everyone else and the group. And you can also see uh, well, all sorts of other various settings I've made throughout here. For this final one, everybody both the group, the owner, and world get full permissions, read, write, and execute to op data shared. Now, that moves us on to using the sticky bit. Essentially, the sticky bit is set so that you can make the file a little hard to delete by anybody other than the owner and uh, all to uh, rename it for that matter. And my understanding is it kind of varies between Unix and Unix what all behaviors. Um, the sticky bit enforces, but we'll show how to apply that here in a second. Now let's say we want to set the sticky bit on opt data shared. First of all, let's actually take a look at it. See, no sticky bit set as of yet. Well, let's use this command. Essentially, 
it's going to set the sticky bit and we set all those world permissions that we set earlier now if we look at that file you see a little T there it means it has the sticky bit set another way to add or remove this would be let's say a plus T or a minus T let me show you that for instance if I do a minus T put it back you see it removed it and of course I can plus T it instead same way just not using the octave representation same basic concept though now let's go ahead and mess around with set group ID and set user ID essentially when you have these bits set it's going to make that particular binary run with the privileges of either the group or the user respectively what we're going to do to set that is well there's a couple different options we can do a change mod and uh, let's say we wanted to set a particular file everybody has rights to it and set group ID or set group ID we could use 2777 or we could do 4777 if we want to set its user ID now I don't want to have to go through and set these individual file access permissions to something different so I'm going to use a slightly different syntax here in a bit but first thing I'm going to do is we're going to have to have some binaries to mess around with so let's get some binaries to work with. There's the who am I command and the id command. What we're going to do is copy them from our bin folder and put them into opt and we're going to modify the rights on those. Actually I'm going to change directory to opt right now. Do an ls on those and you see the privileges I currently have on those. Well we also see that they are owned by root since I'm running with root privileges right now. Let's actually modify that. Let's set www.data to own or should be the group ID of uh, ID. And I'm also setting the owner of who am I to be Alice. You see those settings have been made. Now next thing we'll do is we're going to set the user ID bit on who am I. And we're going to set the group ID on ID. Have to see ID too many times there. Of course, there's a little bit of confusion. Now let's do an ls al. And let's see what the difference is as far as uh, running who am I uh, underneath our normal uh, settings and who am I with set user ID or group ID set. So I'm going to type who am I. Now this one's going to run this one's in my path underneath bin. It's not going to actually run the one in the current directory. Unix like operating systems generally don't work like Windows. So you see it says I'm root. However, if I run the one that's in the current directory, it says I'm Alice, even though I'm root. Now, if we were going to do the one with ID, let me just run ID, see what all groups I'm associated with. Now let's try running ID in the local directory, the one I've uh, set the group ID on. Well, it seems to be running underneath www.data's group ID. So that's the basics of setting these, and those reasons why you might want to set one, like you say you a certain binary you need to run with root privileges because it has to edit certain files, it might be, uh, you might set it's a user ID. Unfortunately, these can also cause certain uh, insecure configurations if someone finds an exploit especially that allows them to get out to a shell by running a binary that's set user ID, they could use that to execute some other process as the privileges of whoever has it set USID to so there's some security issues there but that's another permission in Unix like operating systems that concludes the core lab part we're supposed to run through all these different commands and show how they're used there's also a few questions in the lab but I'm not going to cover those I'm just going to send that on to uh, the teacher's assistant but I hope this has been somewhat informative and uh, sorry for stuttering throughout it, but there's various things about some of the commands I have to look up as I'm using them because I don't have to set these kind of permissions regularly. Here are a few links that may be useful to you. Check out the Wikipedia entry on file system permissions to get more details on things like the sticky bit and set user ID and set group ID. Also, Dartmouth College has a nice tutorial on permissions as well as ZZEE.com. Thanks for your time.